What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for Sports. Shout out to 93-year-old Bob Cousy for finally calling out these mediocre has-beens in the mainstream sports media that keep attacking the all-time greats for self-promotion, for hits, for likes. So you may remember last month in a segment on ESPN, Mad Dog Russo, a.k.a. the fake Skip Bayless, and Reddick was going at it about Chris Paul, his place in history, when J.J. Reddick just, for some reason, just started attacking Bob Cousy, talking about he couldn't dribble with his left hand, and if you put this player in, I think he said Austin Rivers would be, you know, uh, a, a Hall of Famer if he played in the 50s. And talking about the fact there was only eight teams and only two or three rounds of playoffs. And so he played against nothing but firemen and plumbers and all that type of shit. So in a serious XM radio interview, Bob Cousy went after him said, basically, the situation is you have a lot of these lesser players in the media. These guys were not stars. And he's talking about, yes, the J.J. Reddicks. Yes, he's talking about the Kendrick Perkins and the Ryan Hollins and all these other guys who were either, you know, role players or in some guy's case, ass splinters, all right? By that, I mean they sat on the fucking bench so much that they had splinters in their ass. But yet, they get on, they get these jobs, and they just shit on the all-time legends. Michael Jordan is minding his fucking business. You know, Michael Jordan, hey, man, you want to come over? Hey, we can have you, my yacht. Hey, Mike, they talking about you on ESPN. What good fuck? And keep talking about him, keep talking about all these legends, talking about Bob Cousy, keep shitting on him. I find it funny that J.J. Reddick says before 1980, you can't compare the NBA to before 1980. That's where the three-point line was introduced. Because if it wasn't for a three-point line, you wouldn't, be a, you wouldn't have had a career. You're a one-dimensional fuck. Don't get me wrong. J.J. Reddick was a great three-point shooter. But, I mean, <laughs> the nerve of this motherfucker insinuating that somebody like George Gervin or Kareem or Wilt, like, somehow they struggle today. And, by the way, Bob Cousy said, yeah, so I guess... Will Chamberlain was a fireman, huh? He started naming all the greats. So I guess Bill Russell was a fireman. So I guess, you know, Oscar Robertson and Jerry West, those were firemen too and plumbers. So I guess Frank Ramsey, the first, you know, uh, six man in NBA history, created that role. Created a role that everybody talks about today that there's, a, that there's an award given for. Yeah, I guess he's a fireman too, you disrespectful piece of shit. I guess Bill Sharma's a, 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 a fireman, too. George Viking. Vern Mickelson. Slater Martin. These are, these are all firemen and plumbers. It's mighty funny. I could go on and on. Paul Arizon. Dolph Shades. Neil Johnston. Bob Pettit. Cliff Hagen. Jack Twyman, Bob Boozer. It's funny. It's 30 fucking teams in the NBA. And if the NBA has their way in three or four more seasons, it's going to be 32 teams in the NBA. Because I think they're going to bring back the, the Sonics. And I think they're going to have a team in, in, the, uh, in Las Vegas. 
But I guarantee you, I can name more Hall of Famers that played in the 60s that are playing right now or playing the last five to ten years that are going to be the Hall of Fame. I guarantee you I can do that. just ridiculous how much they disrespect these guys, man. Eight teams. And look at all the Hall of Famers I've mentioned. Oh, Walt Bellamy. Got about him. It's ridiculous, man. Eight fucking teams. You can make an argument that because there are fewer teams, that means the players were better. Because all those fucking bums would be sitting next to your ass watching them play. Like you, J.J. Reddick, 